The very first public Benghazi hearing will be this Wednesday on Capitol Hill. A special House committee has been investigating the deadly 2012 attacks in Benghazi. They killed Ambassador Chris Stevens, Sean Smith, Ty Woods, and Glenn Doherty. The panel, which includes seven Republicans and five Democrats, was created in May to investigate the security lapses and intelligence failures that led to the attack. Let's talk about it with our political panel. Angela McGlowan is a Fox News political analyst, and Corey Elon served as a communications aide in the Obama White House, now senior vice president with Vox Global. Glad to see you both. Glad, Glad to, to see you. Here. All right, so this will be our first unveiling of what they've been up to all this mm -hmm. time. Um, Corey, Trey Gowdy, a congressman, Republican congressman in South Carolina, former prosecutor, has been very methodical in this whole process, and he's been flying under the radar. I mean, it used to be that we could ask him to come on the show every Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, he's been very careful, and he wants this to be taken very seriously, so he's been under the radar doing the homework. What do you think we're going to hear Wednesday? Well, uh, I think we're going to hear from very serious individuals about a very serious issue, which is exactly how can we protect our ambassadors when they're serving overseas. So my hope, because we have serious people who are involved in this mm -hmm. conversation this week, that we're going to get some real content out of it. My concern is that this is happening just a week before members of Congress are going to go home to, to campaign for re-election. That's the only concern I have. But other than that, I hope that we get some real good information out of this. And the other new information, Angela, that mm -hmm. we've gotten uh, in the last few months is, of course, mm -hmm. the Brett Baer special on Benghazi, mm -hmm. where he talked to three security um, mm -hmm. contractors who told a different story, saying uh, one of them claiming that three times they wanted to go help, they were told to stand down, and they finally went on their own to try to see what they could do. That changes a bit of the narrative that we'd heard to this point. It changes a bit of the narrative. And I want to start by saying this delay is the worst Form, the deadliest form of denial that leads to death and destruction and that's what we've seen and basically to have the commander-in-chief say that he has no strategy even dealing with ISIS I think this hearing is right on time where we need to know what has been put in place so we won't have Americans killed on foreign soil which is our land but Shannon 14 years ago you had bombings in East Africa where parameters were supposed to be put in place then you had 9-11, 2001, we were just talking about that. We should not have lost four Americans at 9-11-2010. That should not have happened. Well, the fact that we have uh, Democrats and Republicans on this committee, on this um, particular group, I mean, Corey, do you think that's going to lend some credibility to whatever they have found into these hearings? Or do you think um, we may have minority protests where, you know, those on the committee, um, the five Democrats versus the seven Republicans, uh, may say, you know, we don't like where this is going, we're not going to cooperate. Um, what do you think? I mean, bipartisan, there's an attempt at bipartisanship here. Well, th that's the word. There's an attempt here. And my hope is that ultimately we have a positive outcome from this hearing and that this is a win for Washington. And if it's a win for Washington, it's a win for the American people who are just so tired mm -hmm. of all of the non-happenings that are happening here in Washington right now, the things that should be getting done that aren't getting done. But again, it's going to be up to Congressman Gowdy to make sure that the tone of this conversation is the right one. But, but it, liberals there, have to be on his chance. side as well there's and say real... that this is not a political grandstanding hearing, which some hearings are, Shannon. Yeah, I mean, I we, yeah, I think we all know. Well, it, but but, but both sides. Not in this case. Right. Right. Exactly. So Gowdy's going to have to conduct case. the tone. He's right. going to have to drive the tone. Somewhere else where there have been some <laughs> heated hearings, been with the IRS. Hmm. Um, primarily with the House Oversight, um, House Ways and Means as well. I mean, there... There's been some heat there. All right. So, Angela, we've had a lot of developments over the yes. summer. We had Cleta Mitchell on, you saw a little bit earlier, who represents a number of these groups, conservative right. groups targeted right. by the IRS. She says still they've not been contacted. The DOJ, the president was outraged. DOJ says we're investigating. Um, but yet she tells me that her clients have not been there. If they are victims of targeting, how have they not been contacted? When I worked with the Ways and Means Committee and we did hearings on the IRS, we invited true Americans to come and tell their story. So I don't see why, if we're trying to get down to the bottom line on what happened, they make great witnesses, wouldn't you say? Secondly, for our president to tell Bill O'Reilly there's not a smidgen of corruption at the IRS and then Loris Lerner to plead the fifth, it's a problem. Corey, well, it's a problem. Well, and at that point, we don't even know how far the investigation had gone. We still don't have any conclusion from the DOJ. So do they have an opportunity here, Corey, to step up and say, we're taking this seriously, here's what we found, here's where we stand on this investigation? Right now, lawmakers say they can't get any answers. Here's what we know. Once again, this is one of the most partisan issues that we're dealing with in Washington right now. We've had 13 hearings over the past of the over the past several months. Uh, this is going to be the 14th one. We've had 750,000 documents that have been turned over in Not this the issue. right ones. 750,000 right documents. Where are the emails? The problem is that this is being conducted in such a negative partisan fashion right now that we can't get anything done. Let's Corey, be clear. Corey. Let's be clear. When the Let's president, when the president 
first heard about this, what did he say? He said he, said he was that outraged. He said he was outraged and that we needed to get to the bottom of this and that we needed to put reforms in place to make sure that this never happens again. That is exactly what's happened by two independent panels that have investigated this issue. Shannon, I have and to ask. And that's, we, uh, that's we, we, exactly we what we need to leave it there. Just the DOJ got got called a conservative office trying to get information and thought it was a Democratic office. So who's partisan? That did happen, but we're going to have to leave it there. We like you to come back. Okay. Please, both of you.